General Howell Estes, the Director of Operations on the Joint Staff, is here this morning to give you a further update on the search and rescue effort. I'll turn the proceedings over to General Estes. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've just seen the U.S. Ambassador to Croatia and the Croatian Prime Minister with a press conference uh, uh, from the site. And what I will try to do is give some amplifying uh, remarks, if I can, on the facts that we know from the search and rescue standpoint. The Ambassador and the Prime Minister obviously covered uh, a lot of the detail there. But I think I might be able to add a few more comments from the military's perspective to, uh, to be of some help. Let me just uh, again use a couple of slides which I think might be, uh, might be useful in, in describing the overall incident again. Obviously we are confirmed now where the crash site is. It is about three kilometers to the north. Uh, northwest uh, on the on the top of a hill as you had as you heard ambassador galbraith uh, describing the uh, photo that i showed you yesterday again pretty accurately describes the location uh, i think with a picture of a t-43 here i know there's a lot of questions you heard uh, questions asked of the people there about the black box issue uh, I think it's safe to say that we have done everything humanly possible on the military side to ascertain whether this aircraft had flight data recorders or voice recorders on board. And the answer we get back continuously from people who are responsible for this aircraft is that it was not equipped with either. Uh, what the Croatian Prime Minister is describing as black boxes, I cannot tell you. Uh, but the information we have is this aircraft was not equipped with what you would consider black boxes, the voice data recorder or the, uh, the, the data recorder itself. Uh, the reason is that the aircraft was procured as a training aircraft originally, uh, and so when it came it was not equipped with that from the factory, as normal aircraft of this kind that are used for commercial uses would come with those kinds of uh, those kinds of recorders. Um, if we get any definite information that changes what I've just told you, we'll get back to you as quick as we can. And I know this is an issue which seems to be a difference between what they're saying there and what I'm telling you standing here, but I want to let you know what I'm being told and we've done everything humanly possible on the military side to be sure our information is accurate. There are boxes uh, on the aircraft, however, that could be instrumentation boxes that literally are black. They're shaped in the form of a box. It's navigation equipment and things of that kind that somebody might construe as being one of these type of, uh, of black boxes. In fact, the black boxes that are on aircraft are actually orange cases, not, not, uh, not black cases. And so that might be where the discrepancy is uh, coming from. But we'll continue to pursue this. And uh, if I have any additional information that I'm, is made available to me, I'll be sure to get it to you right away on that issue. OK, next slide, please. Uh, I'd elected to use, again, a chart to uh, describe uh, what, where we are with the search and rescue and the, and the forces involved. In fact, uh, we have US, Croatian, French, and German up there. We've had. Uh, some help from the uh, Spanish and the, uh, and the United Kingdom as well uh, in assisting the uh, Croatians and ourselves uh, with the recovery operations. I mentioned yesterday that uh, Brigadier General Mike Canavan is the on-scene commander. He spent most of the night last night and early part of today at the site. He has come down from the site now uh, and is back down at the, at the Brovniks Airport. Uh, he has been replaced by another senior individual on scene as the on scene commander. Uh, we have in the neighborhood of 30 people at the crash site uh, carrying out recovery operations. The manifest issue, uh, again, you heard this discussed uh, with, the, with the ambassador and the uh, Croatian prime minister. There is a, a slight discrepancy. Uh, we have confirmed that there are no survivors and recovery of remains is in progress. Uh, 33 uh, remains have been recovered. And so you look at the number of saying 35 on the manifest versus uh, 33 remains there appears to be a discrepancy. Uh, we can only say that the search has been extensive 
It uh, it is continued as 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 you know, a uh, number of uh, checks of the area has been made, and will continue until this issue is resolved one way or the other. The crew member relating. Uh, the crew member that survived the crash that died en route, uh, I, can, I can confirm to you, was a, a member of the crew, and it was a, a, a lady. Um, she did die en route to the hospital. They got her into an ambulance out of the crash site, which is a very difficult process in and of itself, uh, and, uh, and did take her en route to the hospital, uh, but she died, as you can see from the slide here, en route. Do you know if she was in the tail section? Uh, I, I don't have any additional information on that. The Interim Accident Investigation Board, the, the Mishap Board, uh, is on its way. You heard the Croatian ambassador say it had just arrived. Uh, again, he has better information than I because he's at, there at the scene. We've been trying to get the, uh, the team in uh, since very early this morning, European time. Uh, they've had a number of weather problems uh, at Dubrovnik, but uh, it looks like the team is now on the ground and will very quickly move up to the site to be, uh, begin the investigation. <coughs> And we've already talked to the last issue about the, uh, the flight data recorders and voice recorders. Um, I think with that, I'll go ahead and take your questions and uh, we'll go from there. Brown's uh, body been uh, recognized or otherwise positively identified? Yeah, I think uh, what I need to say about that is that the, uh, that the recovery operation continues. And uh, we know that there are no survivors. Uh, the, uh, the objective is now to get that done. The, issue of positively identifying remains uh, is not something that's normally done on the scene. Those people are up there to do the recovery operations and so uh, once that process has been positively uh, completed uh, in terms of identification, the information will be made available General, to what you. did the air traffic controllers say uh, when they realized that the plane was off course? Uh, I have no information. Again, this is something that the uh, this is something that the accident board will will uh, get copies of, as to exactly what the conversation was that transpired between the tower and the aircraft. Uh, uh, that's not been made available to me. Obviously, those things are are uh, what we would use the term impounded, because they are protected so that nobody can tamper with them or lose them or whatever, so that they can be made available to an accident investigation and. And I, in my position, have not sought out that information. That's for the accident investigation to pursue, not for me. Yes, sir. General, uh, can you release the manifest now? Um, it's, again, not my position to release the manifest. Uh, it's, this is obviously a very sensitive issue. They want to ensure that the, uh, that the families, the loved ones of the people who were on board the aircraft have been notified once that is complete for the series of, of people, uh, obviously Secretary Brown's uh, family has been notified, but all of the uh, dignitaries that were traveling with him, uh, the members of the Commerce Department, uh, the Croatian families uh, involved, and the U.S. service members' crews. Once we are sure that that is complete, I feel certain you'll see the uh, transcript, or the, 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 the list released. The State Department. It'll be a simultaneous release, I would think, with the U.S. service members released here, or Croatians releasing the, num the names of their uh, lost members, and then the Commerce Department probably releasing the remainder of the names General, of the State General, Department. General, 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 if I could ask you a little bit about the approach, I don't want you to tell me what caused the crash, and I understand you can't right. do that. Right. He was flying an ADF approach, an NDB approach. Mm -hmm. NDBs, my understanding, can be affected by weather, specifically lightning. Is that being considered as a factor in the investigation of what caused the crash? Sure, okay. Carl, I think everything that you uh, can come up with is going to be considered in trying to determine what caused this accident. That's the purpose of the accident uh, investigation team. I can guarantee you that they will be extremely thorough in their analysis in trying to determine the causes of this accident. General, General are you, uh, first of all, are you standing by your statement yesterday that there was no communication prior to the crash indicating any difficulty, whether it be off course or any other problem. And secondly, uh, there, there was one uh, press report today referring to this beacon issue, that this is uh, old technology, 40, 50 year old technology, and it's outdated, et cetera, et cetera. Can you speak to that? Well, uh, I think to, uh, to answer your first question, yes, I stand by my statement. I have no conflicting information. Uh, you heard the Croatian am ambassador, or the Croatian prime minister and our ambassador make virtually the same statement. They've been at the crash site. They saw no evidence that there was uh, anything strange about it from the standpoint of the issues that you raise. 
And so uh, I have no conflicting information to what I told you yesterday. In terms of the technology of the beacon, the NDB approach, uh, it is a kind of an approach that's been around for a while. Uh, there's no question about that, but it's still a very valid approach. Uh, we have a very definite procedure we follow. It's a safe approach. Many aircraft have landed at the airport there at Dubrovnik with, uh, with no difficulties. And in fact, as you know, some landed that morning uh, in early afternoon prior to uh, Secretary Brown's aircraft scheduled arrival. So um, we have no reason. If we thought it wasn't a safe approach, we wouldn't allow our aircraft to use it. I guess that's the easiest answer to it. Reports yesterday David, that some of the David, equipment had to David, reconstruct a radar track for this plane. I mean, did you have this plane on your AWACS tapes? And if so, do we now know the exact route that plane flew? Yeah. I, uh, David, to answer your question specifically, I have not seen that. I suspect that since we had AWACS flying, that there will be a tape available that they had, but I cannot guarantee you that. I don't know that for a fact. And uh, I, I just, because of all the other things going on and the concern for the recovery operations where we've been focused, I haven't gotten into that issue, nor will I. That will be an, uh, something for the Accident Investigation Board. Mark? Is it true that the, uh, the remains will go from Dubrovnik uh, directly back to Dover, and then will the uh, military fly the remains from Dover to uh, individual uh, states for families? Yeah, Mark, uh, this is an issue, I think, uh, you know, there is some discussion, and you all have heard it, that the, that the remains will go from Dubrovnik back to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. I think that that is a decision that is yet to be made. There are a lot of considerations that need to be uh, uh, taken into account. And once that decision is made, we'll get the information to you. One more. Reports yesterday, General, suggesting that perhaps some, uh, some navigational equipment, some radar or whatever, had been removed from the area of the airport by the Serbs during the war. Uh, do you know if that's true or not? Yeah, I don't have any confirming evidence that that's the case. Uh, we know we had a navigation aid at Dubrovnik Airport, which is a valid navigation aid for which we have a published approach. Uh, and so whether there was additional things there at a previous time, I think is, uh, I can't confirm or deny for you, but it's almost irrelevant because they did have a valid navigation aid, which they were obviously using so to land. Report, uh, suggesting that the pilot uh, was using some visual reckoning and identified the wrong ridge, mm -hmm. when one ridge over, mm -hmm. and went in the wrong valley. Mm -hmm. is, that, uh, is that a theory that seems uh, plausible to you so far? doesn't seem plausible to me as a pilot. I mean, when you're flying an instrument approach, you fly an instrument approach until you have complete contact with the runway and are safe to land. Then you transition from your instruments to a visual approach. You don't come off your instruments until you have visual sighting of the runway. So I find it hard to believe that if they were flying the approach, were on course, that they would have been doing, trying to fly around visually. It's just not something an experienced pilot would do. Thank you very much. We will be having a press conference on privatization here uh, momentarily. I believe that the Deputy Secretary of Defense is, uh, is on his way down now. We have a filing break, please. Uh, five minutes is the best I can give you.